Henning, welcome to Raz Music. Uh, this is Metal Talk. I'm very excited, very happy to have one of the best voices in power metal, in my opinion, uh, definitely on the second wave of great singers, and it's Henning Bass. How are you today? I'm doing pretty excited and pretty awesome, man. Pretty good. <laughs> good to see you. We, all excited. we see that you're sitting uh, in, your, uh, in the studio there, uh, currently working on uh, several projects, I'm guessing. Uh, we know that, you know, during COVID times, uh, musicians have to do all sorts of musician work out there so what are you doing right now Henning? Well I'm singing uh, for a guy uh, the whole album or an EP and actually I'm, I'm actually doing this all over the months I have different different people asking me sing on their records sing on their songs and albums and verses like dynamic very dynamic now it all comes together so I have to be very flexible about it because <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the main time I'm a voice coacher I'm voice coaching uh, producer and singing producer and um, yeah when I'm not on the road when I'm not touring I'm doing this basically right you mentioned yeah. uh, diverse styles that you work with um, what are some of the recent um, styles that you've been working on perhaps a, a bit of uh, operatic music or this strict new metal what are you working on lately Henning well basically uh, I used to be in a band or I'm, I'm still I'm I hope I'm, I'm the guest singer in a band called Mayan mm -hmm. and it's a very, very dynamic, unique uh, style and sound this band has. And it's uh, nice. symphonic, it's operatic, it's theatric, it's everything bombastic in there, death metal, progressive. And I'm very interested in many paths of music, of metal. Um, right now I'm doing a very power metal basic uh, thing. And on mm -hmm. the other hand, I'm doing this kind of sabotage style it, hmm. it really depends i'm very flexible and and i'm very open and i'm so happy when people ask me over the internet can you do this are you serious and and i mean like i'm, I'm getting inspired of this it never gets bored you know right of course it's, it's really when you when you uh get to the point within a band or with an artist where everything's the same every year you do the same album and you don't get inspired with each other Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of tiring as it being as an artist or writing music you know it's it has to be refreshing like in a marriage <laughs> so, <laughs> of course you, know, so you have to be dynamic these you days. have to keep it spicy right you have to keep it spicy Spicy, that's the word yeah <laughs> so let me tell you um I first heard you when uh, you were in this band that a lot of people as soon as we posted that we were going to interview you a lot of people recognize Metallium it's uh, one of the bands that I would say rose you to fame, definitely among the power metal world. Um, I, 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 as soon as I listened to the first tracks uh, of that album, Millennium Metal, I could hear the hunger in that singer. I could hear the ability. Talk to, it was eight albums, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened, Henning, throughout the whole history of Metallium? We've written eight albums, that's true. Uh, two DVDs. And, two um, DVDs. Yeah, touring, yep. schedule. Um, yeah, what happened? I don't know. It's like we were trying to keep the balance when it comes to uh, refreshing ideas and, and making new music every year. Mm -hmm. And at some point we felt like maybe it's good to call it a day or to have a break or whatever that means. I mean, never say never until now. We, I mean, we're still in talking. We still have a good relationship. I mean, of pause in between because everyone was really busy with his own thing mm -hmm. but on the other hand i i am this was my first success so to speak um in metal and um yeah and chris gavry is still a big friend of mine and we try to find out maybe by next year to write something new stuff and like oh wow the point where we can have a release or reunion <laughs> the, rumors, the rumors are true Maybe. That would be great. That would be great. That would be know. amazing. You know, there, there's still an interest uh, after all this time. I mean, it's been like 10 years now mm -hmm. where, we, where, we, where we just uh, quit. And um, maybe it's, it's, it's a good, it's, it, it's definitely a good energetic and very, uh, a lot of potential in the air. I can tell. I mean, what happened, you know? I just came up with an idea. Maybe this is why the world is going to shit because Metallium took a break. So That's they, why, they, they have to come back and save the world, my friend. There you got it. Somehow it's there closing you got it. now. Yeah. It's closing now. The circle is closing. So we've got, we've got to call uh, this, <laughs> the circle. Of, yeah. We've got to call Lars and, uh, you know, let him know that we've got to do something about this. So um, 
Talk to me no. about, about your time in Metallium, some highlights. Uh, what did you really enjoy? I mean, I can tell you songs at the top of my head that are my favorites among power metal, you know, Break the Spell. What yeah, a I'm, song, man. It's an amazing song. Yes. yes. I mean, in my opinion, my, my taste tells me like the first album, chapter number two and mm -hmm. chapter number four as one. Mm -hmm. uh, right. In my opinion, the best albums we have written. And uh, the other ones are like, okay, kind of mm -hmm. like, I know. And, but yeah, these, these two stands out for me. Um, the, the first one was written very spontaneously. I mean, we, we have so much less time to write the stuff and then it went so quick. Mm -hmm. Tarana came into the studio, recorded the drums. Chris, Chris flew over from America and we did that very quick and, and it was produced so well. Mm -hmm. And Masaka Records, I mean, a record company back then, they freaked right. out and they, we had 100% support and then these days it was like no problem like like regarding the money and then make it happen you know like a new right. new band and a new uh, record uh, and I, I mean i get goosebumps i mean every time every time i went out with fire wind or whoever mm -hmm. uh, where i was in japan or south america people coming up with the cds can you sign can you sign or can, yes of sure i can and let's talk and have a chat with each other and people are so dedicated since tw over 20 years man it's, it's mm -hmm. incredible it's nothing for granted you shouldn't take this for granted man it's like oh no it's no no yeah. I remember the, your first DVD. You spoke of, of uh, having two DVDs. I, I definitely owned and watched your first one, Metallion Attack. I believe it was, it was, a call, it was called. And uh, it did show your travels all throughout South America and Europe and you touring with a, a few bands, even like Synergy back in the day, which was, uh, you know, a great band that also unfortunately disappeared. But, uh, you know, the Marco, I, Marco, bass player uh, from Nightwish was in their band. Uh, Marco. Oh, uh, yeah. Marco Hetala. Yeah, Marco Hietala. Yeah, he was he was in there as well. I believe uh, Kim Kimberly Goss was there. Uh, Alexi Laiho uh, from Finland was there yeah. too. From Children of Bodom. I mean, you're talking about like you you pioneered with some uh, some of these uh, uh, artists, you know, that were back in that uh, around that age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the first tour we went out with, with uh, the European run was with uh, Synergy. And we were mm -hmm. four headlining, I thought. Maybe it was not running. I don't know. It was a prime of fear. And it was very good, well visited in every, every, every place and every town. It was good. It was good response. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you have no expectations what's going to happen uh, regarding the selling or regarding the reputation, regarding everything. I, mean, I was young. I was, I was 19 or something. I don't know. You were 19? 20. Really? Sorry, 20. You were 20? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe that's it. a great that's a great age to tour, man. And and what a and what a talent you you had, you know, to uh to go out there and give it your all and, and you can really tell in all those albums. What can you tell me about uh some of your um you know your uh ex band members from Italian? You know, uh we know that Michael went off to Gamma Ray. Uh you know, oh, he's you his, band was, his band is called Unity. He's uh, in Unity? Okay. Yeah, he, he's doing the songwriting, the producing, the mixing, mastering, he's the main guy. Uh, oh, wow. We have Daniel Richter from Gamma Ray in this band, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So it's not an all-star thing. The other ones are, are, are pretty known musicians as well, but uh, Unity right. is pretty busy, so they're doing okay. So Okay, you know. good, good, good. You mentioned Chris Caffrey um, as well. Uh, yeah, Matthias Lange. Matthias mm -hmm. Lange is a band called Resident X, or used to oh. be. Uh, they are from Romania, I think. And uh, he has this very, very good ACDC tribute uh, in Hamburg. It's called Bon Scott. Um, oh, okay. The, the good thing is they have a good front guy. Uh, he's he's a, like a comedian. He makes in jokes like, oh. like, like pretty similar. He makes he makes all these 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 phrases like funny things and uh, mm -hmm. people love him. You know. Right, it's right, right. Go band and yeah. Um, Lars is self-employed since ever. He's doing his own mm -hmm. thing on the Isle of Mallorca, Palma de Mallorca. Oh wow! Installation for LED lights and PA systems or lightnings, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's pretty busy with that right now. So everyone has his own thing going on. Like Chris Gavry is, uh, as you know, TSO, Trans European Orchestra. Yeah. But that was canceled also. Of course, yeah. Which uh, I, I, I heard that you were part of their lineup for a short time. Is that correct? Or you no, recorded I, something with them? I used to have an audition in 99 with okay. uh, Paul O'Neill and Adam Lind and Chris Gavry. Hmm. And um, it was about Beethoven's Last Night. 
Oh. And they decided uh, to give me a very low song, a very low. Mm. Oh, it was very low for me back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it is a muscle, you know, you have to train it somehow. Of course. And you get used to it. And I wasn't used to that stuff. And uh, on the other hand, they, they mentioned anything like, oh, you, 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 you may sound too European for that track. Maybe we should mm. pick another guy who sounds more American. And I don't know, it, it, was, it was kind of disappointing because I wanted to mm. and, um, back then, years ago. Of so course, Chris yeah. is uh, pretty much at home right now making music with other bands or other projects and creating his own tomato soup or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris is a very nice and funny person. I still I love him all over the years. He's, he's a great guy. So uh, we, one of the questions that was submitted, uh, Henning, uh, was that when um is when is metallium when when is metallium gonna get back together when will you guys come back together to save the world <laughs> it was one of the fan submitted questions uh to us on our social so what do you think henning uh, is it maybe time to just call the boys um we already discussing this because um we felt like we should come back because we mm-hmm. have something to say now and it feels good to get in touch again. But on the other hand, um, there might be a traffic jam with all these releases and shows by next year. So we try, we're still figuring out maybe when is the right time? When is the right time anyway? Who knows? You know, it's Correct. unpredictable right now these days. So what do you can yes. do? Um, should, you re- should you do the release within everything or should you do the release in another time? You really don't know. And um, yeah. That's a very insightful answer, Henning. Let me tell you. Very insightful and intelligent answer. Let me tell you. Yeah, because yeah. you're right. When all of this comes back together, everybody's going to go back on tour. Everybody is going to want to release something. So you definitely don't want that message to be diluted. That's very, very good answer. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I can't wait for a Italian return. Um, so overall, um, Really, really happy to hear that. Let me tell you. Let's move on uh, to to another topic here. Definitely know your work with Firewind. Uh, we know that you were there. Uh, talk to us about your 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 you know what you did with them, how it felt. Um, how how did you feel about that time? Talk to us. Uh, we did one track, uh, one record, one album. One record, correct? Uh, okay. Back in 2017, the release was Immortals. Immortals. The, the other one, the name of the other was for Immortals, and um, we did a few shows all over the world. Uh, mm-hmm past three, four years. Um, we know each other pretty much since 2007. I was replacing the singer back then. He had some private issues. And so I replaced them on a tour with Engra mm-hmm. back then, uh, Spain, Portugal. And then it, it turned to, it went to the point where I have to do all over Europe, the touring, because he, he wasn't feeling good and he wasn't come back so they asked me to if i can carry on with that so we did the whole run i mean like like asia america europe a lot of things because fire went back then was a really a big huge touring band they were touring a lot yeah and um yeah um i just i only had a few do- few weeks actually like uh, to figure out the program the set list <laughs> and it was, it was really really tough really tough thing to do and um but somehow with some sheets on the monitor, on the side fills, you know, take a, yeah. look, take a look, where are they? Where are the lyrics? <laughs> you get used to it, you know, with, with, with the motorism, with the movements, and you get the lyrics a little bit easier with that when you move and when you, you know? Of course, of so, course, yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, we only had this uh, sound check, like a rehearsal, right. during a day in Portugal, and um, they were like, okay, Okay, that's it. Let's go. Let's do the show. Rock and roll. And it was really rock and roll because life, Firewind, Firewind is a great live band. And mm-hmm. It's all about the live playing and the dynamic and the, a guy like Gus G who's playing incredible guitar, great performer. And yeah, musically, it's like, zack, here we go. <laughs> that's right. And with uh, proficient musicians just as yourself, I'm pretty sure Mark, it was, Mark, uh, yeah. Mark it was Cross an easy thing. That. To go back to your question, uh, Mark Cross, mm-hmm. uh, the ex-drummer from Firewind and a uh, Metallium drummer on the second Correct. Album, he yeah. asked me back then, could you, could you help us out? We have a problem here going on. He was the one who was asking me. Hmm. And so I just finally instinctively said, yeah, I, I can try. You know? And um, it worked out that well. In the end, at the end of this world tour, I said, hmm, shall we join forces or something? 
I don't know. I feel right. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> and everyone says, yeah, same here, Malacca. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> on the other hand, the record companies and other reasons where they like, they want to move on with the uh, previous, previous singer with the Apollo. Um, it's always those damn music companies oh, and record yeah. companies, right? And then I was <laughs> alone again. <laughs> oh man, but still, yeah. still working on many different things. Um, you yeah. mentioned, um, you know, so we also want to, want to ask you about this particular time, this, uh, trivia portion, I guess, of, uh, Henning Bass in his life. We know that around 95, 96 and the land of the free tour, uh, you sang, uh, uh, you actually sung with Gamma Ray because Kay Hansen was sick. Do you, you know, remember doing this? You know that? Of course I know this. <laughs> <laughs> how did you feel um, being so young, going in there? I mean, 95, 96, Henning, how did it feel? Land of the Free Tour? Was it 95, 96? Maybe, maybe the, the, the trivia know, uh, is wrong. You tell me. First of all, um, uh, Gamma Ray or the guys from Halloween, uh, we have this same circle in Hamburg. Everybody knows each other. It's a big, uh, mm. big brotherhood and everyone is working with each other and friends with each other. And we know each other since I'm 19 years old. Uh, I mean, mm. for example, I, Hansen and me, we know each other since then because I was rehearsing with another band in the same building as Gamma Ray. It has the same studio in there. Mm -hmm. And they heard from me somehow. Maybe over the balcony, all over the walls, whatever. I was screaming really loud, my ass off, and then uh, <laughs> all of a sudden Dirk Schlichter came down and Kai Hansen came down, and we had uh, we had to know each other, had a little small talk, and they asked me to come by and have a little jam, <laughs> and I was mm. like, "Really? Okay." And I was, as I said, I was really young there, and um, yeah, somehow the same thing, like a black star. Uh, record company wanted to have Kai Hansen on the vocals because he is. Kai Hansen, and he's the voice. And uh, he was the first singer, first singer of Halloween and with the Walls of Jericho Correct. thing. Correct, yeah. And maybe that, that's, that's an argument for record companies. You know, you have the Kai Hansen on the vocals, maybe in, boundary, in different boundaries in countries, people saying, okay, we should have this guy, after Ralph Schiebers, of course, and not a new person. Maybe that was one of the reasons. Maybe I was young, maybe I was not finished yet with the, with the uh, search of my voice or my style. It depends, it really. I. After all, I was really sad because that was another chance as well. Uh, it came to the point where you're thinking about yourself. Do I make something wrong? Is it me or is it like, you know, is it just the destiny? Is there something in the universe that waits for me anyway? Or, you know, mm -hmm. and Boy. you have these thoughts sometimes. Um, I totally understand, Henning. Totally understand. But yeah. then I believe uh, maybe a few <laughs> years yeah. later, you, were, you wanted to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, and that was the Land of the Free Jam rehearsal stuff. They were touring in Spain. I wasn't touring with them back then, 95, 96, or whenever where that was. And they invited me in there for choir jobs. So I, I sang on the album, like, Somewhere Out in Space, Land of the Free Part 2. And then later, now I remember, now that comes, the, yeah. Um, 2007, we were touring with the Hellish Rock uh, thing, like Halloween and Gamma was touring together. Right. They were joining forces on stage later with Kai Hansen playing mm -hmm. guitar. And back then he felt like condition wise with the throat tired and, and yeah, sore throat, whatever. And asked me if I could fly over and uh, a couple of days uh, to, to join him, to help them with the singing. And I did a few wow. shows for them. So that was really, woo incredible because we had thousands of people there in, in the halls and, and, and nobody had no idea i'm coming and it was like people freaking out in spain it was like wow so you but sang he he like, still, still. you got goosebumps so you yeah. sang halloween and gamma ray songs uh gamma ray, gamma ray set the gamma just ray gamma, the, the gamma yeah. ray set oh man yeah. fuck yeah i, I wonder if that's I online Land of the Free, Ride the Sky, all the classics, all the yummy stuff. 
Yeah. Oh my God. All the yummy stuff. You say it well. (laughs) I have one more. um, We have one more question for you. Um, Being an avid, uh, back in the day, being an avid Halloween fan, uh, obviously Metallium fan, there was uh, an album that you recorded and participated with uh, that Uli Kush, uh, the drummer from Halloween, kind of led, which was uh, Catch the Rainbow, a tribute to Rainbow. Do you remember this? Um, we were re- we were touring together in '96 until '99. In between, in between his Halloween phrase and my Metallium or Brainstorm phrase, I used to be a tour mm-hmm. singer for a band called Brainstorm. I was replacing the other singer as well. So, right. and uh, <laughs> the Rainbow thing, uh, I, w- I to be honest, I really needed to get used to it because I I'm not how can I say that? I'm daring to say that, but I'm not the biggest deal type of guy. You know, Ronnie James Dio is like a very amazing singer, no question about it, and no, a great voice, both. But I wasn't aware of him. It was not my inspiration to sing. My inspiration was like a guy like Freddie Mercury or Bruce Dickinson, you know, and uh, uh, more that kind of style. And, uh, but Henjo, Henjo Richter from Gamma Ray and Uli, uh, we get to know each other back then, and it felt like pretty pretty uh magical to join forces and just to do this tribute band and all of a sudden we made the cd with ralph shapers and andy deris and then and this 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 album and it was was really interesting inspiring time so to say yeah still um i'm since today uh, i have a band called skyline skyline which is yes other Red band, uh, from it is actually the wacken cover band it was the first band who appeared on the wacken stage 99 uh, 90, oh. sorry, 1990. Right. Yeah. And we're still playing Stargazer, for example. Hmm, okay. Stargazer yeah. from Ronnie James Dio. Uh, from Great Richard song, Michael. too. Oh, amazing. Um, we were trying Kill the King. Yeah, I mean, there are so many great songs. Lost in yeah. Hollywood, Graham Bonnet. Of course, yeah. <laughs> A lot of brilliant songs, yeah. yeah. I, I want to go back. I wanted to go back to the Metallium question because um, Please. there was a guy. Hang on a second. Uh, there was a guy posting right now, or a couple of ages ago. <laughs> it's a broken English thing. Like, why not keep in some one band definitely, or you create a new band of power metal like Metallium but refresh? Um, hmm. uh, he wanted to say, um, why don't you keep a band, or why don't you stay in a band? I think I get that question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that was a good question for me because Tim Owens was was asked many many months ago or years ago why can't you keep uh, all these why do you keep all these projects why you do this why why you don't you know stay in a band and remain with that and he answered very honest and strictly like because I need to make a living I need to make money with metal and I want to make money with metal and it's possible if you work your ass off if you do the touring you cannot have not only one band if you you, or you have a side job or a main job and you do the music things like like a hobby or like like kind of prime you know it really depends and my my question my answer is like i i wanted to have a band all these years i wanted to have just one single band and to have it like a like a brotherhood and we keep it together and we kick the ass, the kick ass in the world and blah, blah, blah. But sometimes some people do change all over the years. Some people don't want to have rock and roll anymore. Some people don't want to have this bus. They want, they don't want to sleep in the bus nor they don't, they hate the touring. They hate the budget, everything. It can happen. Everything. It's very, it's a very human thing going on when you have a band and, um, also, also the mixture between human beings with each other. It's, uh, of course. It, can, it can change. Love and a marriage, I always say, it's, it's a roller coaster. And then people do change, band changes. So the band changing thing is not a singer thing. It is, it is a all over the place thing. Like if, you don't, if you're not happy with it, leave it. That's right. If you, if you don't want to do it, uh, do something else. I mean, if you would, quest, if you would ask me personally, I wanted, I wanted to have a band always. Mm-hmm. But it, it sometimes... It came to the point, oh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's not enough or I don't feel inspired anymore or this guy or he don't like me anymore. It, it really depends, you know. Of course. Guarantee. 
So, I mean, let's say that on January 1st, everything goes back to normal, concerts go back. It's not, well, God knows if it's going to happen. But let's say it happens on January 1st, everything goes back to normal. What's next in your career heading? What are you seeking for? What are you hungry for? And what's next? Um, yeah, um, I, I think I might be busy until December uh, with studio jobs and voice coaching. And um, to be honest, I'm, I have no band since last December. I'd left Firewind uh, during the Queenstrike tour. We had a run with Queenstrike in mm -hmm. the winter time back then. And since then, uh, I had a I had a, I had another job in a band called Santiano as a choir singer. Santiano is a, is a German, very successful German band here, and um, everything was cancelled. And I, I got uh, like thirty shows cancelled this year. And oh. there's there's no no thing in there's no such thing in sight where I can tell um, like. Yeah, this is going to happen. This is going to, it's very, it's very unpredictable. Predictable. I'm standing mm -hmm. in the, on the floor, like, like waiting what's going on. I try to compensate my time with the voice coaching and the studio job. That's all I have. It's, and it sounds boring, I know, but um, it is what it is. I try to promote myself on Facebook and Instagram with funny videos or, or songs when I, when I contribute with stuff. And I want to build up my YouTube channel where I'm going oh, to see yes. other stuff like, like, like not metal, but maybe rock or pop or ballads let's see because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i want to and um yeah maybe it gets paid i don't know maybe it's not <laughs> i don't know i'm a broken musician anyway very sad life <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely be posting your social media down here henning so that everybody follows you make sure you follow henning base on social media facebook instagram you got youtube you're gonna get open up your youtube now what else do you have are you on twitter what else are you on I'm working on Patreon. I'm gonna I'm gonna install this thing with the Patreon thing, uh, where mm -hmm. you can have videos. And because I want to re move on with the studio jobs, if someone is interested in me for his album, I should sing on, on this album or music. You can you can contact me on uh, Facebook mainly, but in the future there might be another some uh, profiles and pages with me. Excellent. Heading. Uh, 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 anything else you want to say to your fans? Man, it's um, if I could put all my love and energy in these two hands and try to explain what I feel when I'm standing in front of people or, or chatting with people or seeing people and, and I see the love and the tears in their eyes when they have the Metallium album or, or the music, the pr appreciation, the, in, the intensity, this is so intense, I couldn't tell. I'm, I could be more thankful when I create music and people love it. Uh, that's the best gift I could ever have in this world. So I want to thank my friends all over the world, wherever you are. I love you and stay metal as much as you can.